now we move on to the infantry now the infantry are definitely not something that i um i i you you know i haven't you know i don't use these as much as other players and i have definitely haven't used all of them so i couldn't tell you all their plus and points but i'll give you a general overview so we've got the Vipuzi Czechoslovakian Special Forces. These are a good, quite a good unit. I've used them a bit. They've got a very accurate um, rifle and they do. A, they have a lot of ammunition so they can keep going for a while. Same again, their RPG-75 is a pretty nasty RPG. It's probably one of the best that packed forces carry. Um, six rockets, you know, it can do a lot of damage with that. And it's got some fr grenades as well for helping out with their infantry comp you know, fighting. Um, and the, uh, as with all infantry, they're incredibly slow. Um, but they've got, but, uh, but these are recon infantry, so they've got good optics. So these are actually an interesting um, artillery spotter unit as they can be equipped with transport helicopters. You can fly them in and then let them spot units behind the enemy lines that they'd rather you not spot and then paint them for artillery. Um, these would be a good Czechoslovakian combo between these and the Dana artillery. Just a little recommendation. And for this, you've got the sort of st standard Czechoslovakian equipment of the Soviet um, transport helicopters, which you can upgrade with rocket pods, ADKMs, or not really powerful rocket pods, or the OT-64 Scott um, armed personnel carriers. These are um, these are pretty fast. As you can see, they're only five points if you want to buy them on their own, uh, but they do 95, so this is comparable to the NATO VAV, and they have an excellent range. Um, and then you can spend a bit more by giving them an, a, a machine gun, a little cannon, an AGKM, um, but while they retain their speed. So these can be pretty well armored transports, but they're very fast, but very weak. Good, remember that. Um, then again on the Re infantry we have got the East German FKB 40 special forces forces um, these guys are cheaper than the Vipuzus, um, but they're gen but and they don't have an but they don't have an anti-tank weapon they have a basic AA missile um, the Estrella 2 I don't know this then isn't that powerful so it, even against weak N NATO helicopters it can be a bit tricky to and um, knock them down but it's a good sort of warning system for defense again they've got a nice, fairly good assault rifle and their grenades are comparable as well um, they use the east german transport helicopter so they're sort of limited in what they have so they've got the basic variant they've got the rocket pod variant and the agm variant they don't have the heavy rocket pod variant such as the vipus you do they, but on the plus side, they do you can unlock them with an Mi-24 gunship helicopter, which has got the rocket pods, the ATGMs, and a machine gun, um, with more armor than the other helicopters have, and then you can upgrade them to give them a Gatling gun and a better ATGM, a bit more accurate, um, and you can give them the East German basic transport, the Spur 60P which is a basically a BGR, basic cannon, um, stuff like that. So, uh, um, don't think there's anything going for it over the Scott, except for the fact it gets the cannon as standard. Um, then continue with the East German infantry. You've got the dedicated Strela 2 infantry. These would be costing less than the, F than the FKB special forces, um, which, don't for which I've nearly forgot have good optics which means they, they can't spot stuff as well as the Vipuzi but they're keeper so what do you expect um, so we got the Strela 2 infantry these are the same as the FKB only they don't have ex you know good optics they've got normal optics they have less ammunition at a more and a less powerful grenade but you can get the Strela 2 at a cheaper price they, they you can equip them with the basic East German BTR variant the SPW um, as you, I saw, as you saw before, but you can also give them the East German BMP. This is quite an interesting unit. It is, it's got more armor um, and a bit more firepower, but it's got a better gun and the ATKM, you know, which has got a lot of AP power. 
and then you can also give a bit of a, a, a upgrade to get a bit more accurate and yeah so a bit more accurate so it's a better fighting vehicle then you've got the Grenzer recon infantry these are would be similar to the FKB only they don't have a AA missile they have the RB key um, uh, they're quite cheap actually at 30 um, however they're only equipable with the basic SBW or you know person um, transport vehicle and they don't have the same kind of and their assault rifle isn't as good as the other sort of airborne recon infantry but they do have the very good optics so these would be a very good um, recon unit to sort of spread across but they're 30 only they're quite good for ambushes because they've got a nice RPG that they can use quite a bit but they're um, the poor selection of vehicles that you can equip them in could be a disadvantage then you've got the Moose Mots Justin, which is the basic in infantry. These guys don't have, you know, any optics going for them, but they do have the RV key, the grenade, and the assault rifle, and, and they cost less than the Grenzer. They even actually have a better RV key, but it's more accurate. Um, so, these, so these are sort of more combat unit. Their assault rifle, again, quite good, 9 accuracy. You know a good amount of ammo so these would be a competent fighter um, and you can equip them with the basic SPW, the BMP and the BMP SP2. So yeah these would be a sort of frontline infantry unit. Back to Czechoslovakia and their frontline infantry unit the Mushustrelki. Um, these guys don't have a very good assault rifle they've got a lot of ammunition but it isn't as accurate in, as other units so these guys will probably lose out to infantry fights with nato unless they're fighting basic units but they're only 10 and they do have the very nice rb key 75 with the 700 meter range 8 accuracy 11 ap and 6 rockets so these would be an excellent ambush unit because they only cost 5 with their um basic armor personnel carrier carrier which is pretty f fast at 95 so these are sort of good ambush unit that i'd recommend to try and maybe even charge it at the enemy as a sort of rush unit because these things are pretty fast um, and then once you're in range of the enemy drop these guys out so these would be a sort of disposable unit and as it, as with their special forces you can upgrade their their personnel carriers to give it a bit of firepower while they're rushing in with a bit of a machine gun cannon or an ATKM. You can also equip them to the OT-62 Topaz. This is a slower version, but it's got the machine gun as standard. And you can upgrade it to a recoilless rifle, which is a sort of ATKM unit. And this version, which I don't actually see what's so good about it. Hmm. It's got a better cannon. Um, but it still costs 15. I'd probably go for the recoilless rifle, which has got the machine gun on this. But that's just me and you can also equip them with the um the oh the, these guys actually got the soviet fighting vehicles so you've got the bmp1 the bmp1 over 1970 the bmp1p and the bmp1d so you're going to equip them with grenade launchers ATKMs, and the worst ATKM, but cost a bit less so these would be a very good so yeah overall these would be a sort of ambush unit you spread them across and you charge them into stuff then now there opposite number in the Soviet forces are the Mozo Strelki um, there's a K in there instead of a C I think that's the only difference in their name and um, these guys are slow you know normal optics um, they've still got the RPG of the Mozo Strelki um, but the Mozo Strelki carry a better one but the Soviet guys have more are more accurate um, I think that's the only difference, so probably the most strongly are better infantry unit than the Soviet ones. Because they have more ammunition, so overall these guys would be better infantry on infantry fighters, but these guys are better at ambushing and charging. Uh, the Soviet ones have the basic BGR, which is a, as you can see here, and then you can upgrade it at 5 points a pop to give it slightly better speed and range improvements. Just depends, you know, so basically you spend more on this stuff and it goes faster. You don't get any firepower upgrade, but, you know, you get them into the battle faster. You can all, but if you want firepower, you can give them the BMP-1. And as you saw earlier, you get, so as you upgrade, you get a be better ADKM. Um, even better ADKM and a grenade launcher. 
if for the full anti-infantry concentration. Now, what makes sets these guys apart is they can also be upgraded to have the BMB2, which is a better fighting vehicle because it's got a better ATKM and it's got an auto cannon, which is a very good unit, um, or sorry, a very good weapon. And you can also upgrade them to let's see what's the upgrade here. Doesn't actually look like there's that much of an upgrade. Let's see. Oh, my game's going a bit laggy here. Uh, I think Fraps might have cut out, so I'm just going to stop recording now, and I'll see you again in a second at the BM. Okay, I'm back. Fraps seemed to be doing something annoying there. I don't know what was going on, but we'll just try and ignore that ever happened. So, BMP2, you upgraded. Um, let's see what you get for your money. For an extra five points, you get, oh yeah, there you go, slightly better armor. Two front, two sides, and then rear one, top one. Then you upgrade a bit again, and you get a better ATKM and auto cannon. But you go back to the only one one zero zero. So the BMP two D is the one you want if you want to keep your infantry safe. The BMP two Uber nineteen eighty six is the one you want to use to give them some firepower. And then you upgrade to the BMP three, which is sort of like the best of both, plus a main gun and an auto cannon, and a good ATKM, but it costs more. So that's what that's what that's about. No, we got some. The infantry are spread out, so I don't want to go flickering back and forth. So I'll just deal with them as I come to them. So these are the Palar Faggot 80 GMs. Actually, no, sorry, Fago. Um, that's something completely different. Uh, so that so this is the basic 80 GM infantry from East Germany. So you've got the assault rifle. That so they can fend for themselves against infantry, but they aren't going to be winning any fights on a one-to-one -one basis. Their AG GMs fairly good as with most AG GMs. That's got a lot of power, and they've got six missiles, which is decent. But you'll probably want to keep them supplied. Um, and they've got the basic East German transport option. Now we've got some more. Now we've got Polish rifle squads. Um, so let's see what's going for these guys. These guys have a, you know, they've got a powerful rocket, but they aren't as accurate as their. Slovakian counterparts, um, and they seem to be using the Polish version of the Czechoslovakians unit, or were they? I don't know, the Czechoslovakians are actually using the Polish vehicle, that's interesting. Anyway, so yeah, the Polish is the, sort of the, they have the same transport as Czechoslovakians, and that's because they are because both are using Polish equipment for some reason, but yeah, the, so here we go. So, basic RPG. They seem to have a better grenade, so they're probably a bit better in f infantry fighting than the Motor Stralki. Um But, and they cost about the same. So, these guys are more all rounders, the Motor Stralki are more dedicated, and they have the same kind of equipment as the Motor Stralki. Now, we've got the PGR Faggot, or Fake, if you're getting those mixed up, so probably shouldn't. Um, so, these are the Soviet ATGM infantry. Um, I think they've got the same. They seem to be pretty much the same as the German infantry, but they have a worse rifle, that looks like. So yeah, they've, it's pretty much the same as the East um, German infantry, but they've got a worse rifle. But you do get a lot more, but they can travel faster when if you spec it up their transport options up to the BTR-70, which is this full 95 kilometers. So these guys are more mobile. Than the, their East German variant, but they don't actually. That they're a lot more mobile. But look, you can also give them a transport helicopter with all the toys of Soviet transport helicopters. So these guys, overall, the unit itself isn't as good as the East German variant because it, its infantry rifle isn't as good. Um, but apart from that, their tra their range of transport options open to them. Leave them, make them a lot more of a mobile force. Then you've got the PTR Conquerors Infantry. Now these guys have a very accurate and very high damage ATGM, six missiles as before. Um, that's the only difference between the two. And but basically these guys cost a tiny bit more. 
believe. Uh, they cost about five more um, than the basic PGR faggots, but they have a much better ADM. These are the ones I'd use. Actually, for quite a lot of games, I actually combined these two guys together just so I can have lots of ATKM infantry if the if you know one if I lose the faggots uh, or lose the conquerors so I have to rely on the fagos. Um but yeah so these guys have the same range of Soviet transport of the fast armor personnel carriers and some transport helos. No BMPs though. Now we've got the Igla infantry now these are very interesting um the range isn't actually that good for an AA missile, they only go at 2400, so these guys out in the open are going to die quite easily, but the thing is there that the Igla is an incredibly accurate AA missile with 9, so it's almost guaranteed a hit, and it's got a HE power of 5, so this thing can knock down NATO helicopters pretty quickly. Um, overall, these are a very good ambush AA, so you hide them in the woods, maybe one or two of them. And then if a NATO helicopter gets close by the time it sees them, hopefully these guys will have fired their missiles and it'll be dead before it knows it. Um, so these are uh, these are definitely be my favourite AA units. Um, and as always, basic range of packed transport cap uh, sorry about that. Capabilities are open to them with the BTRs and the transport helos. Quite an interesting combination of a helicopter-borne infantry that its main speciality is shooting down helicopters. Bit of irony in there. Um, then you've got the Strela 2 infantry, um, who are a lot cheaper than the Iglers. They're only 15 compared to the Iglers 45, so you can actually buy three of these for every one of those guys. But their range is worse, their, their accuracy is awful, and their damage is worse, so these guys aren't going to do as much to the helicopters as the Eaglets, but you can spread them out more which makes it harder for helicopters to kill them before they get that lucky hit um, Same kind of basic range of transport of the BTRs and the MI-8s After that you can upgrade to the Strela infantry these cost a tiny bit more than the Strela 2 at about 5 for each one um, for each respectively and You've got an improved range com comparable to the Eagle. Accuracy 7, so it's you know nearly as good as the Agla and Haiti part nearly good, as good as the Agla. So these guys are sort of the ne nearly as good as the Aglas, but they're cheaper. Um, these are actually are quite a cost effective infantry, but they still cost about f half as much as the Agla infantry, but they have they're nearly as good as them. So these guys are actually the most cost effective um uh, AA unit in the Warsaw Pact, but the Aglas are still the most powerful. So, you know, it comes down to personal choice. Do you want cost effectiveness or just the power to take down helicopters as fast as possible? And as always, they've got the BTRs and the MI8s. Now, we've got the engineer squad. So these are actually inf interesting infantry because they have an assault rifle and the grenade, but they have a flamethrower instead of any kind of AA or anti tank rifle, anti tank bazooka. Um, flamethrower, I don't know, I wouldn't really recommend it. These guys are probably the best basic anti-infantry unit you can have compared to rifle squads because they can use their flamethrower as well as their rifle and it's got a good amount of ammo for a flamethrower. Probably burns through it quite quickly though. Ha 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 ha, not, bad, not a bad joke. But yeah, these are sort of like forest designed infantry to sort of help out. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what they are in a nutshell is they're fairly cheap their rifle isn't as good but they've got a flamethrower so they're sort of like a dedicated anti-infantry basic unit um, and you can equip them with the basic land combat forces of the soviet union the btr the bmp the bmp2 the bmp3 and that's pretty much it then you've also got the polish version of the engineers these cost a bit more um but they've got a better rifle um, and they've got, I think their grenades a bit better as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, they've got more ammo in their grenades. So these guys actually pr probably be a better engineer squad to use, just because they've got a better assault rifle. So these guys will probably do quite a bit of damage to infantry. Um, guess, guess, keep note that although I'm saying they're better against infantry, their flamethrowers range is lower than their assault rifles range. 
So I'd recommend these guys for sort of close quarters, city and forest use. Um, although that's usually the only point people use infantry, I guess. And these guys have the Polish vehicles of the Scots. They also have the Soviet um, helicopter fleet to play around with as well. So these guys are actually a pretty good unit um, for infantry on infantry combat. They can get a bit expensive, um, but they're a very good basic unit. Then we've got the basic Polish rifle squad, which has got the RVK2, the grenades, pretty much in everything in one unit. Probably comparable to the Motorstrel key. Uh, but yeah, but that's basically what they're used for. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And they've got the, some Scots for fairly fast transport and that can be equipped with some weapons and transport heroes for really fast transport with weapons but cost more. Now, this is a very interesting unit, the Spetsnaz. This is a very specialist unit, but it's very good at its job. And um, these guys are actually pretty expensive at 30 for the infantry unit themselves, but they are they are pretty much the best anti-infantry infantry in the game. They've got their assault rifle, you know, with his standard range, very good accuracy, and a, quite a decent amount of ammunition. But there's, but they've also got these napalm bazookas, which have a, a range that actually exceeds their assault rifles. These guys are quite good for open combat infantry. Um, they're very accurate with it, and these guys are these bazookas. They don't do damage to vehicles. They don't have any uh, um, AP power, but they do a lot of damage to infantry. These can not pretty much half kill an infantry squad, squad in one shot. Um, and they've got a decent amount of ammunition for it. Uh, they've also got these these concussion grenades, which have a de quite a good range for grenades. Very accurate, so they'll always hit. So overall, if you want to clear out infantry, the Spetsnaz are the best to do it. Also, they've got good optics, so they're a bit better for fighting in forest, but they can spot stuff earlier. Um, but overall, these guys are pretty good units. I always use them um, for infantry and infantry combat. Um, just remember they are expensive so you want to keep them supplied but if they run out of their bazookas and grenades they're no better than other infantry that costs maybe a quarter of what they cost um, and for their stuff they've got they've got quite a wide range of transport vehicles they've got the standard BTRs they've got the MI8s they also have the full MI24 family to play around with with all with all the bonuses that I've been talking about, about before so if you can but you know obviously this costs a lot of, this one, for example, is 130 for some infantry and helicopter. That's quite a lot, but they, this is a pretty damaging combination. Then you've got the VDV. Um, these guys are a specialist airborne force for the Soviet Armed Forces because you can only equip them in helicopters, either the MI-8 or the MI-24 family. Um, uh, but that's pretty much it. It's, they've, they're pretty much r rifle squads that you can that are only equipped in airborne forces. Um, so they've got the standard rifle, you know, the good RP key, they've probably got the best RP key of Soviet forces, but not the best, but equivalent to sort of Polish and Czechoslovakian forces. And a grenade, which is a fairly good grenade. Um, but their advantage, of course, will be the, um, the amount of helicopters you can equip them into. Then you've got the Vladyskral key, hope I pronounced that right, but almost certainly didn't, which is the sort of Czechoslovakian um, rifle squad. Similar idea. I think they're more or less the same as the VDV, but they cost a bit less because um, they've got a worse RP key, but they've got more ammo for their um, assault rifle, and it's the same. So these guys would be a more sort of infantry-focused unit than the VDV. Um apart from that they're identical really and they get the MI24 uh, sorry the MI8 um, family to play with as well as their very fast Scott so these are so overall these guys are uh, just a rifle squad um, a, a, sort of, a sort of basic infantry unit um, and I think that covers Warsaw Pact so thank you very much um, next time we will be covering the logistic recon and support vehicles of NATO. So until then, thank you and goodbye.